everyone, I'm Chelsea. I'm with Fauna and Flora and I'm going to quickly talk through geospatial data applications for enhanced conservation management and how we bring data and people together to inform decision making. Really quickly, um, I work with Fauna and Flora. And Fauna and Flora is the world's oldest nature conservation NGO. And we've been working for over a century to protect the diversity of life on Earth. We only work where we've been invited to work, supporting, sustaining and strengthening local conservation um, action around the world to provide direct support to people and species on the front line of biodiversity crisis. We work with local conservation partners to protect habitats, to revive oceans, combat climate change and so much more. The work we do is wide, wide ranging across over 40 countries and it's an exciting place to work with every project having an impact on some of the world's most interesting and at-risk species and habitats. I work in the conservation technology team where our focus is on connecting people to tech that will help draw insights and increase the impact of their data. We've grown in the past couple of years from being a largely geospatial focused team of two to a team of five, growing with the ever increasing demand and variety of requests for tech applications in our projects globally. In the past year, I've been involved in projects ranging from identifying restoration sites to the critically endangered Calvia Gibbons, designing new marine management areas of the coast of St. Lucia, and assessing vegetation health using remote sensing following re restoration actions. As such a small team, we're constantly looking for ways to support our in-country staff and partners in more efficient and accessible ways to bring about a greater sense of ownership of data and increase the amount of data we can analyse to increase our conservation impact. With so many colleagues working and collecting data in the field, we want to maximise the rich data they're collecting by linking it with geospatial data such as high resolution satellite imagery to identify relationships that help that can help inform our field team's management actions. But on the flip side of that, we have so much rich data content that we struggle to keep up with the analysis demand. So we're looking for ways to increase efficiency, such as through automatic species identification or camera trap images and developing apps to assist in translating range of data into occupancy analysis outputs. As a quick example of how we're bringing together geospatial data and people, under a current grant from the Con Connected Conservation Foundation, we have access to 50 centimetre resolution satellite imagery to help us to transform our work in three game reserves in South Vietnam. The high, the high resolution imagery will allow us to produce land cover maps with greater detail and accuracy than ever before, helping us to target a conservation effort in areas identified as most vulnerable. We're currently exploring which method to use to generate the land cover maps from this imagery. Although we would love to use very high resolution imagery in all of our projects, this is the first that we've been able to apply thanks to the grant from Connected Conservation Foundation. So we're open to suggestions on how to maximize the use of this imagery. At the moment, we're considering using machine learning object oriented classification and would be keen to hear if anyone has any advice or experience with working such with such high resolution satellite imagery. Once we have developed the land cover maps, we'll use these in conjunction with data collected by field teams, such as through smart patrols and camera traps. The team in South Sudan is keen to try automated species tagging for these camera trap images. Pulling these multiple data sources together will generate connectivity and occupancy models. We're excited to see how the data sets we produce with this satellite imagery will reveal more about the landscapes we work in. The land cover maps and connectivity outputs will be utilised to inform targeted conservation management decisions, such as through community engagement to inform land use management and practices. In the context team at Bologna Flora, we support our in-country staff and partners to access technology and apply data collection, management, processing and analysis to support and maximise conservation impact. But we're a small team and we have a lot of data but we have limited time and resources to explore new and innovative methods and techniques to increase the efficiency of our work. We're currently exploring the application of very high resolution satellite imagery, and we'd love to hear if you have any ideas for the best methods to produce land cover maps from that imagery. We're interested in automatic species tagging of camera track images in particularly East and West Africa, although all of our projects globally are also interested in this. 
we really want to be more active in the Wild Labs community, so please do feel free to reach out to us. I think Patty and Meredith are currently in the chat as well. Um, and my email address is there if anyone else would like to contact. That was a really quick whistle stop door. That Steph, was so great. In time. Chelsea, you've put almost, not really, but you've almost oh. put us back on track. Well done. <laughs> But awesome. Thank you so much. I, I asked you today because I just thought it might be interesting for to hear. Um, mm -hmm. We hear and like this whole to, this whole session today has been kind of from the tech side or like more on the, the, the tech innovations side of things. But you guys are providing um, you, you guys work day in, day out with people in the field, conservationists in the field and hear about their challenges and the data they're working with and the experience they have and I just thought it might be interesting for our community to hear from within one of the big NGOs about how the tech teams work and like the sort of challenges and you're kind of the conduit between our community and all of like FFI's field staff right um, so the big thing you're looking to hear from if anyone has experience is um, uh, to hear from people with satellite um, image processing experience is that right? Yeah, so we've currently got some very high resolution satellite imagery that we're looking to do some object based orientated classification. Um, but we have not done that before. So we would love um, any advice if anyone has got any. Um, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Uh, well, you know where Chelsea is and we'll have it in the recording as well and connect people with, with you afterwards. Mm -hmm.